Hi, I'm Viv Rolf, and this is one of my top tip tutorials for learning about systematic review. And this is going to explain to you the differences between using medical subject headings and just just freely using keywords. Um, and so, remember, the medical subject headings are the way that publications are catalogued on these medical databases, and that might seem quite incredulous when you consider the volume of medical scientific papers that are published. And yes, there are people sitting there cataloguing and putting the papers in relevant sections, um, which is what comes under the medical subject headings, the MESH. And we'll have a look at that in a moment to see a bit more about what that means. So that is one way of searching literature, and that is fine. You can use the medical subject headings or... You can just freely use keywords, a bit like a Google search, you just whack in keywords and um, the search engine this time will be searching for those keywords within the text and we, we can be a bit more precise in Medline. We can tell it just to search for the title and the abstract or it can just search for those keywords anyway. So you will, if we run both systems, there will be differences between the search results. The mesh will give you maybe a more precise result but still might miss papers due to human error and the the second method using just random keywords will turn up um, a less precise search and again maybe some more random papers but you might be more likely to find papers that actually maybe have been miscatalogued in the mesh so doing both is really important here so if we go to Medline if you look for MeSH and an introduction to MeSH, you'll see a bit about the, the history and the structures. And, and it's quite interesting, really. So if we scroll down, they're dividing medical subjects into anatomy, organisms, diseases. This is quite nice, really. Chemicals and drugs. So for example, something like probiotic, it might be catalogued under chemical and drug, biological factors, food substances. It might come under disease, treatment for diarrheal disease. It might almost certainly won't it come under microorganisms. And will it come? It might come under intestinal system here or skin. So um, th th these are really broad sets of terms, but actually quite quite nice just to get get you to see how to structure your, your search. So if we go on to Medline, the first thing we can do, well, let's just search for probiotic. I've got a, um, a limit off on there, so I've just taken that off, and not surprisingly, 12,000. Um, what we can now do is tell it, right, I'm just, just going to want to search in my mesh tree. Um, and what we can do once we've searched, if you go to this display settings tab, always make sure it's on full. And this opens up the, the mesh tree and all the, the subcategories where that probiotic might come. So to be able to search for this, sometimes there's a little checkbox. But if you put add to search builder, now search PubMed, and you see it's put a little annotation there. So this is now searching just probiotics within any of those medical headings or subheadings. Now this is a really useful little tab, this advanced, because then you can get your search histories and we'll be using this again later. Um, so ignore that first one because that's where I took that filter off. I'm going to delete that. Um, here's just my big search for probiotics, 12,000, and then that was my mesh search. So it, it more often does come out that way if you're doing a big search of probiotics in all of the fields of course it's going to pick up every word that's in the method section in the conclusion whereas the mesh is that pre-catalogued search what you can do if i can spell and this is quite a useful little page sometimes because you might want to increase the precision of your search and say i'm going to look just for the titles and abstracts so what happens to the numbers now we could go back to the advanced. Well, not surprisingly, um, that's narrowed it down even further. So really, if you're doing a systematic review, you will really spend quite a lot of time um, refining this search strategy. 
Okay, so you would seriously think about your search strategy, and if you're publishing to an organisation like Cochrane, there will be pre-established strategies for you to use around your subject area, probiotics, inflammatory bowel disease, and certainly if you wanted to search just for study type and clinical trial, um, you, you will download and pre-plug in um, the required search strategy, which is really useful. But this this just shows you how complicated actually this is. But actually these few simple lessons to get them right will really stand you in really good stead. So what we might want to do next is I might want to look for inflammatory bowel disease. Oh no, let's be more specific. So ulcerative colitis, you can see it's picking it up here in some of the text, but that's an all field search. Again, I might just want to do the mesh one. Let's see what it comes under with the mesh. Um, this is where it's come up in various sections of the catalogue. Click on the first one, which is generally always the main one. Click those display settings. Yes, that's on full. And I'm going to add it to the search builder and now search. So when it searches this time, you'll see it's put that mesh abbreviation in. I'm going to go back to the advanced. So here we are, we start to build it up. So this first one at 37,000 is searching for ulcerative colitis in all the fields. The mesh one is just using the mesh catalogue and the, I'm going to do it again. I mean, there's probably other ways of doing this. This is just the way I do it and really do sit and play and have a good play, in fact. And now I'm citing, um, looking for just titles and abstracts. And I suspect that's narrowed it down. Oh, and a little bit. Well, in fact, probably even slightly more. And, and there's no rhyme or reason to that. It really just depends on the publications. Actually, what I might want to do now, OK, I'm just going to have a quick look. So I'll click on that search result again. And this is quite useful by, by using the limits. Now, I wouldn't always recommend students to use these because people start to then limit by date, by language, whether I can get a free paper. It's introducing all sorts of bias into your search. But for now, I'm really just going to look for randomised controlled trials. So you see by doing that, I can narrow that down quite nicely. So that's another thing you might want to do as a glance. But the key to it all, right, I want to know how many papers there are, on ulcerative colitis that have looked at probiotics. So I'm going to pick not number 51 and 47, which are my mesh ones. I might just go for these abstract ones first. And this is where we're using the Boolean terms now. And literally I can use the annotation for search, which is the hash chat tag. I'm going to use my search 48 and I'm going to combine it with my search uh, 52. So, how many studies out there have looked at probiotics and for the treatment of ulcerative colitis? So, here we go 227. Cross link those two searches. So, that's quite a manageable number. I might want to just have a peep. Let's look for randomized controlled trials and this you know if you were starting out for the first time on a subject you might just want a quick and dirty look to validate your research question you're setting out on a dissertation to make sure you pick something achievable and sensible I've had students do this and suddenly there are no papers where there's no clinical trials in your area or whether you're looking at diagnostic interventions or whatever your publication remit is you might then not want to do the review, you see, or you might need to think, I'm going to need to make this broader. I'm going to have to look at all of inflammatory bowel diseases or all functional foods. So this is quite nice. And glancing down, they all do look pretty sensible. Clinical trials, looking at um, forms of inflammatory bowel disease, looking at different types of probiotics. We've got probiotic combinations here, VSL3. We've got, see, we've got colitis in different disease scenarios um, and lactobacillus there at the bottom. So a reasonable little quick and dirty search. Mm -hmm.